You can use the Pages panel to edit the size of the page that you're working on. However, there are two ways to edit the page size that you're working with. If you need to change all of the pages in the entire document to be a new size, so for example, you create a document that's 8.5 inches by 11 inches and then you realize that your project was supposed to be 8 inches by 10 inches. The correct way to change all of the pages within the document would be to use the File Document Setup dialog box and you can change the size of the page there. However, there are some instances where you need to change the page size of just one page or just a couple of pages within your project. If that's the case, you're going to use the Edit Page Size button at the bottom of the Pages panel. At the bottom of the panel, there are three buttons. Uh, the far left button is the Edit Page Size button. It looks like a piece of paper that is displayed both horizontally and vertically, or in portrait and landscape orientation. If you were to click on that, that's the way that you would edit a page size instance, so just one or two pages within the project. The middle button looks like a little piece of paper with the corner turned up, and we know that anytime we see that, it's the new button. Because it's on the pages panel, it means a new page. And if you were to select this or press this button, you would get a new page after the current page that you're on. So in my design, or in my example here, I am on page two or three. Let's assume it's page three for now. If I was to press the new page button, I would get a new page after page three, so I would have a new page four. If you're wanting to add a document or a page to the end of your document, you would double click on page eight to navigate to it, and then you would press the new page button. The last button on the right hand side is the trash can, and you can use that to delete. So if you were to select a page or a spread, in my example here on the left, I have master B selected, and on the right, I have the spread for pages two and three. If you select a page or a spread and click on the trash can, it will delete it. When you're working with pages, it's important to know exactly where you're at at all times. And so if you are on page one and you want to edit page six, you need to double click to navigate to it if you're going to choose the pages panel as your main navigation method. So just because page two and three or master B is selected or highlighted in the visual, it doesn't mean that that's the page I'm actually on. Always double click the page that you want to navigate to and then you can be assured that you're actually on page four or page six or page eight, whatever page you happen to be working with. The pages panel also has a flyout menu that allows you to do a number of things. We're not going to cover every single one, I'm just gonna pull out some key highlights, but always explore the options flyout menu in the top right hand corner of any panel that you're using in Adobe InDesign or really any Adobe software for that matter because it will always give you more options than what are available just kind of on the surface of the panel. For the Pages panel, if you click on the Options Flyout menu, you have the option to insert pages, which is um, an easier way to add multiple pages and to control where they would go. So if I use the New or the New Page option at the bottom of the Pages panel, I will insert one new page. If I'm trying to insert 34 pages, I would have to click that 34 times. There's also a new master option. When we start to use master pages, you may want to use multiple masters. So in my example here, I have a master A and a master B, but maybe I need a C master, a D master, and an E master for whatever I happen to be working on. You can use the option flyout menu to create new master pages. You can also use it to modify master page options. So if you click on master pages, you'll get another flyout that will give you the option to save master pages. Right now, I don't have a master page selected, so I'm selecting pages two and three. So I can't save that as a master because it's not a master page. But if I had master A selected, I'd be able to save that master page. You can load master pages from other documents. Um, you can also select all unused masters. So if you're not using them, let's say you created A master, B master, C master, D master, and E master. Um, if you're not using them, you can quickly delete them like we would delete unused swatches. Um, and then we haven't learned about master pages yet, but when you learn about master pages, you will learn that you have the ability to detach things from the master or you need to reattach them. You can also do that via this flyout menu. You can remove all local overrides, which are the items that you detached from the master. Um, you can then relink them or you can override and do different things. And you can also hide master page options. 
If we go further down that option flyout menu, you can create alternate layouts. This is mostly used for creating digital layouts. An example of this is if you're trying to make an app and you're formatting it for an iPhone and an Android device, Android device, etc., you can create different size options, maybe for the iPad versus the iPhone. But you can also make a landscape versus a portrait orientation um, design. And you don't have to necessarily do that just for digital outputs. It's just what it's used most often for. For our class, um, I would like you to take a look at the page attributes options. You'll have the ability to color label your pages. You can rotate the spread view. You can apply page transitions, which uh, when you make an interactive PDF, you'll be able to apply um, page transitions to the interactive PDF. And then you can flatten your spread. So if you color label a page, kind of like you would color label a layer, it will add a little highlight underneath the layer so that you can indicate something about it. And so if you're working on a project with a large group or a team and you're working on a 48-page book, you can color code the pages for who's editing which page. Or you could color label pages that are done that you do not want to edit any further. Maybe you give like a green thumbs up for pages that are done and ready to go and a red for pages that need to be looked at. Maybe you're sending the file for proofing and everything's good to go except for page 36. So you highlight page 36 and say this is the page that I want you to work on. You can also rotate the spread view. And so in my example here on the pages panel, all the pages are in uh, portrait orientation. But sometimes when you're working on a book, even though the book itself is in portrait orientation. Maybe there's a map or a chart that is rotated 90 degrees on your page, so you can't really read it upright if you're looking at the book, but the intention is that the user would rotate the book in their hand to look at the map or the chart. It's really hard to design with your head turned 90 degrees to the side, and so you can use this option to rotate the spread view so that just the way that you're looking at it in InDesign is rotated so it's easier for editing, but when you go to output that book, the book still knows that it's a portrait orientation page. The last thing that I'd like you to kind of focus on for our course is page transitions. So if you go to the option flyout menu, you scroll down to page attributes and then choose page transitions, you'll be able to apply page transitions pretty easily to your entire project by just clicking on one of these options. You can co have combs or blinds, you can fade from one page to another, etc. And just one reminder is that these only apply to digital outputs. Obviously, a printed document is not going to have a fade from one page to another when you are flipping through a physical book. The last option at the bottom of the flyout menu are panel options. Not all InDesign panels have a panels options available, but the pages panel does. And you can change the size of the pages that are viewed. You can make them small, medium, or large. You can decide that you want the pages to view as a vertical column, like in my example, or you can change it to um, show them horizontally. You can show spread rotation or not, you can do a number of different things. And so what I would like you to do is at the very least launch this panel and just click around and see what happens and see if there's other settings that you like. For example, for the pages panel in InDesign, I don't do anything to it. I like the way that it is. But the swatches panel has a panels option and I like to make it have the name of the swatch as opposed to a swatch icon. And that's just my personal preference.